Muy buenos días para todos y todas. Damos la bienvenida a las. Good morning to you all. We give the warmest welcome to everyone that's connected to be part of the side event that's part of the political uh, high level forum 2021, the utilization of knowledge platforms, a tool for the recovery of this action ticket. So I would like to remind every participant that you can access uh, the inter simultaneous interpreting service for English and French in the bottom part of the menu. Just to start, we would like to thank the office, uh, the UNOSSC, United Nations Office that for South South Cooperation, that coordinated this event with the, with the APC Association in Colombia, Presidential Cooperation. So the objective of this event is to share a couple of many digitalization initiatives for the exchange of knowledge and generate a space of dialogue about the contribution of South South Cooperation towards digitalization and, and knowledge management in post-pandemic times, post-pandemic times to accelerate the economic reactivation and also the implementation of the 2030 agenda. So up next, I'm going to give the floor to Mr. Adel Abdelatif, Director of the UNOSSC. Welcome, Director. Thank you very much, uh, uh, colleagues. Uh, good evening, good afternoon, and good morning. Uh, Ms. Angela Ospina, Director of the Pre Presidential Agency for International Co Cooperation of Colombia. Uh, dear colleagues, welcome to this uh, event at the 2021 UN High Level Political Forum on Digitalization of Knowledge Platforms, a tool for recovery and educative action, co organized by the Presidential Agency for International Cooperation of Colombia, APC Colombia and the United Nations Office for South-South Cooperation. The focus of this side event aligns closely with the theme of the 2021 Action PF, which seeks to build an inclusive and, and effective path for the achievement of the 2030 Agenda in the context of dedicated action and delivery for sustainable development. It is not only directly related to the Goal 17 of the sustain of the Agenda 2030 regarding strengthening means of implementation of Agenda 2030, but also provides important part to the achievement of the whole sustainable development goals. Yesterday, the United Nations Secretary General, in his remarks to the opening of the ministerial segment of the High Level Political Forum on Sustainable Development, emphasized that we must heed the lessons of the current crisis and invest in more equal and inclusive societies. This calls for every country to provide a foundation of opportunity for all by expanding access to universal, universal health coverage, social protection, quality education, and digital connectivity. For the past years, countries of the global south have increasingly recognized the importance of knowledge sharing as viable pathways to address common challenges and to accelerate towards the achievement of the sustainable development goals. South-South knowledge exchange has become the most important and dynamic pillar of South-South and triangular cooperation. During the COVID-19 pandemic, knowledge gaps in the global South and uneven access to solutions, expertise, and resources have become ma major barriers for optimizing the contribution of South, South and Triangular cooperation towards the sustainable development goals. The economic and social recovery of countries of the global South from the COVID-19 crisis will depend largely on their ability to adapt good practices and to capitalize on them to improve their current situation and realities. In the global South, the digital divide is still large. According to the International Telecommunication Union, 3.6 billion people, nearly half of the world population, do not have access to the internet, the majority being girls and women. Only 19% of people living in least developed countries are connected to the internet. 2.2 billion of the unconnected are in Asia and Pacific, 425 million in Africa, and 121 million 
in Arab states. Within the global digital divide, southern countries to face the significant digital gender, uh, gender divide. Globally, women are 20% less likely than men to use mobile internet, translating into over 1 billion women who are not using mobile internet. Despite internet access being considered a fundamental enabler of human rights, it continues to be a major challenge for developing countries to narrow the widening digital divide. In this regard, rapidly increasing technological change coupled with the challenges of managing digital communication amid the COVID-19 crisis has a considerable impact on southern, southern countries and the achievement of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. South, South cooperation is essential to the development of many industrialization boosting activities, including a strong data economy across developing regions. The introduction of big data and artificial intelligence technology has revolutionized many aspects of the economy through digitized manufacturing. However, this shift is not seen across developing countries due to the lack of ICT infrastructure to support this technology shift. This calls for more developed access, connectivity, and affordability to complement regional cooperation in building digital literacy. Digital, digital transformation provides a broad number of powerful tools for more inclusive knowledge sharing and offer new opportunities for development cooperation by enhancing South-South knowledge sharing, collaboration, and increasing connectivity. While developing countries are deeply impacted by the pandemic, the crisis has created an impetus for innovation and the necessity to tap into broad networks for knowledge, ideas, and solutions. The South is able to exchange knowledge, good, knowledge, good practices, techniques, and methodologies through digital platforms, obtaining results that are effective. Digital and virtual tools allow the participation of a broader range of actors all over the world. In, in 2019, the United Nations Office for South-South Cooperation launched South to South Galaxy, an artificial intelligence powered digital global platform for, for knowledge sharing and partnership brokering. South to South Galaxy represents our recognition of the exceptional potential represented, represent, presented by new digital technologies and offers transformational cooperation opportunities for enhanced knowledge sharing, partnership brokering, and collaboration among multiple stakeholders. We are glad to see that our partners from the South have not only leveraged these platforms for sharing, but also initiated their own digital knowledge sharing platforms. Today, we join the Presidential Agency for International Cooperation of Colombia to share various digitization initiatives for knowledge sharing and identify the contributions of South-South cooperation to the digitalization of knowledge management in the post-pandemic recovery, to accelerate progress in the decade of action toward the implementation of the 2030 Agenda. APC Colombia is an important and close partner of the United Nations Office for South-South Cooperation. Since 2015, the United Nations Office for South-South Cooperation has been working closely with the agency. APC has also contributed significantly in creating and expanding partnerships and cooperation with countries from the Global South and have documented good practices of South-South cooperation. On behalf of the United Nations Office for South-South Cooperation, I would like to congratulate APC Colombia for its leadership in digitalizing information related to South-South cooperation and for strengthening knowledge exchange through digital transformation. We are looking forward to continuing working with you. Thank you. Muchas gracias, director, por sus palabras. Antes de darle... Thank you, director, for your kind words. So before we give the floor to our director, Angela, I'm going to remind to every attendee, once you have the service, simultaneously, 
petition that can do it. It's at the bottom right part. You see an interpretation icon and you can choose your language. Dr. Angela, she is the director of APC Colombia, uh, Presidential Cooperation Agency. Welcome, director. Thank you very much, Manuela. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all our dear friends from around the world right now are connected. We have more than 90 friends uh, connected and it's a pleasure for us to welcome you. Uh, it's also my pleasure, of course, to welcome you to this conversation with our, our colleagues from UNOSC, Mr. Bela Latif, Ms. Gray Wong, and Ms. Shams Banihani. Who, get, who have been champions on the South-South cooperation around the world. And as you expressed, Mr. Abdelatif, for us, a great, great partners. It's a pleasure to work together. Mr. Mario Cimoli uh, from ECLAC, who have uh, muchos años, decades, has studied development issues in Latin America and how to solve them, and especially the debate on transition that has been very important for a country as Colombia. Also to Mr. Jonathan Wong from SCAP, a global reference for promoting development in highly populated regions. And I want to also greet Ms. Sara Hamuda, a friend and promoter of cooperation between Colombia and African countries. And of course, to Mr. Rocio Sanz. Rocio, como estas? Uh, our guide and partner on, on matters of uh, knowledge management. Over the next hour, we will be speaking about the importance of digital knowledge platforms as a tool for recovery in, decade, in the decade of action to promote networks and linkage among different actors. We in the Global South have been promoting knowledge exchange for decades. South-South cooperation is a predicate on the notion that our country shares uh, many similarities which can be exploited through technical exchanges to adapt best practices developed in other countries. But yet, COVID-19 was a great equalizer in terms of access to knowledge. It brought into relevance that all countries not only in the global south are interdependent, uh, interconnected, and interrelated. All development cooperation institutions were forced to rethink their approach and to find creative ways to fulfill approach uh, to fulfill their mandate within the restrictions to physical mobility. APC Colombia, in response to the challenge presented by COVID, decide to innovate its methodologies for working and even its funding uh, criteria uh, for South-South cooperation projects. During 2020 and 2021, we leaned on digital technologies to conduct our bilateral and triangular cooperation. And we discovered that, they, uh, that we could reach four partners around the world. Digital platforms provide a reliable architecture for knowledge management. They make it easy to share contents among partners and to track progress in the implementation. The idea of a knowledge hub for South-South cooperation extends from a strategic objective that we have pursued over the last couple of years. At APC Colombia, we have studied how to make our cooperation more effective uh, making better use of our resources to engage more partners and to be more mindful of how we deliver results. This orientation towards professionalization, uh, towards being more rigorous in the, our approach to cooperation has also been impacted by the pandemic. Now the challenge is larger and so there needs to be our response. Going forward, we intend uh, to highlight the virtual or hybrid component in our project as a tool to expand the reach of our resources. We are adopting a virtual first, hybrid first cooperation methodology. But we need to be mindful of the risk. You already established some of them, Mr. Abdelatif. 
The Global South compromises many countries along a spectrum of income and local capacities. There are huge gaps around the world for access to technology, as, uh, access to health or education, reflecting the different balances of power in business, government, and society. As our work migrates to a hybrid first methodology, these gaps must be addressed with increased urgency so that the opportunity for higher reach doesn't turn into another factor for exclusion of vulnerable uh, population. Access to technology should be a top priority for countries in this decade of action. Now, after many months of work, it is my great pleasure to announce APC Colombia's Knowledge Hub on South-South Cooperation. It is our strategic bet for strengthening capacities with our partners by making available public policies and best practices in Colombia that are adaptable to other contests and scales. The hub has three uh, work streams, a virtual campus, in which Colombia will offer short courses that promote active learning in alignment with national and global priorities. These courses develop areas in which Colombia has international recognition, such as cultural in industries, macroeconomic instruments, and disaster risk management. A second component, the collaborative space, uh, 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 it must strengthen the capacities for managing South-South and triangular cooperation projects. This space um, will share tools to help partners to uh, formulating uh, the, for the for formulation, the implementation, and the monitoring of the projects. We will organize our cooperations agenda through this instrument and will provide reports to help us to be more effective. And the third one is a community of practice of South-South and Triangular Cooperation for a multi-stakeholder audience that will promote debate and knowledge sharing on topics of interest to the entire Global South. And will make available a library of documents and multimedia contents for free consultation. We designed this uh, community as a space to connect the dots between the specialized conversations, those conversations that most of the time take place uh, behind the closed doors and that must be open and wider their spectrum. Our bet is that making this work more visible will help develop networks of practitioners. Our first two communities of practice will be based around two very important um, uh, themes, measurement of South-South cooperation and knowledge management. We welcome our participants, uh, 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 the, your participation, all of the uh, more than 90 person who are right now uh, with us and to of course our panelists uh, to make the suggestion about other issues to develop in the coming months. We hope our Knowledge Hub can provide a platform to showcase best practices from around the world, not as a static repository of files, but as a living resource of applied knowledge. And of course, our Knowledge Hub has been inspired by the ideas and examples from around the world such as the work on communities of practices developed by the World Bank, and more recently uh, by the South-South Galaxy Platform from UN Office of the South-South Cooperation. Our idea of making Colombia a knowledge hub is the result of our experience, and we know that any country can use its own experience to also become a knowledge hub. Using digital technologies as building blocks, we can develop platforms to interact with other spaces and develop a new architecture to improve our work in this decade of action. We will reach out to partners around the world to exploit synergies and make sure that our work creates knowledge products that are relevant to the needs of our times.
We will also integrate this methodology into our upcoming mechanism for bilateral and triangular cooperation. We hope you come with us over the coming weeks and months in this adventure, and I invite you to contact Catalina Quintero, our Director of South-South Cooperation at APC Colombia, to find out how you can obtain access to the Knowledge Hub and participate in these communities. Now, dear friends, please join me in welcoming several accomplices from around the world in a panel of discussion about the value of knowledge platform as a tool for recovery in the decade of action, moderated by uh, our partner, Ms. Grace Wan, Deputy Director for Program and Operations at the UN Office for Self-South Cooperation. Thank you very much, and the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Dr. Angela, and thank you for both of the directors for giving us very inspiring remarks. Indeed, as we've heard, knowledge is our most valuable asset for sustainable development, put at the center for South-South cooperation, triangular cooperation, and international partnership. Digital transformation is the unique gift of the times we live today, yet neither has been equally shared by all. So how do we optimize the value of knowledge as a shared asset for all by putting into the best use of the special opportunities and tools offered by digitalization? Now, this panel, I have the honor to moderate. We will be able to hear from distinguished speakers with very rich and recent experiences and insights on this topic. We have a few uh, pre-planned questions for each of them, but in the meanwhile, I would like to encourage all participants to share your comments and your questions in the chat box. If time allows, I would summarize those questions and pass it on to the speakers as well. So without overdo, let me first introduce my dear colleague, Ms. Shams Banihani, UNOSSC Knowledge and Research Specialist. She's really a shining star that advanced us. Uh, the research agenda for South-South cooperation through the South-South Global Thinkers Network, a network that connects over 250 think tanks around the world, and also, she manages the South-South Galaxy uh, platform that has been kindly mentioned by Dr. Angela. She will present to us South-South Galaxy and the possibility of linking it with existing platforms in order to reach a wide range of users. The questions we have for Shams is, we know that South-South Galaxy Very recent. It was launched in September 29 on the site of uh, on the South South Cooperation Day. So two years, not even a toddler. <laughs> How has it evolved and accomplished? Uh, what are your experiences and lessons learned during the past two years? And since it's called Galaxy, it connects stars. How? What are the tools and approaches that this platform? strengthen a ecosystem for knowledge management and knowledge sharing around the world. So Shams, let's hear from you. Thank you Grace for the introduction and thank you Dr. Angel and APC colleagues for inviting me to speak at this really important uh, event and also congratulations on the launch of uh, South South Cooperation Knowledge Hub. We look forward to uh, working with you on this exciting initiative. Uh, let me start by saying that in today's um, era that digital technologies are offering transformational opportunities for development cooperation, especially in the global south, and that could further strengthen South cooperation. Uh, to build on this uh, important potential, uh, you, uh, UNOSC, along with our uh, development partners, which is made up of UN um, agencies and other development partners, we launched South South Galaxy, which is, a, like my colleague said, it's a global digital knowledge sharing and partnership brokering platform. Uh, just to, I'm going to just give an overview about what the platform is for, for 
for our, our participants who are not very familiar with it, it's it's a it's a platform that complements rather than substitutes or duplicates existing national and regional institutional arrangements. It acts it acts as a, a, a both as a, a nonstop uh, shop for all partners to communicate and share solutions to address common challenges. Um, and, and as a matchmaker by connecting solution providers with solution seekers, uh, their solution, uh, uh, southern countries and interested uh, partners are able to locate concrete um, cases, share their knowledge and initiatives, collaborate with potential uh, partners digitally and explore funding opportunities. Also through its research arm, the platform is connecting governments, experts and think tanks on the global south to ensure that southern perspectives and insights are included in the mainstream policy dialogue. Um, the, uh, the, the Galaxy um, platform makes South-South cooperation more of a reality by eliminating a significant barrier of entry through digital technology and ensuring that Southern partners can easily access and navigate a wide range of knowledge, good practices, research, experts, and partners. Um, that thereby it's, um, it's strengthening the integration and uh, uh, of sharing of sort of knowledge, expertise, and technology into regional and national capacities. The knowledge, uh, the galaxy is all about placing great experiences, practices, exchanges of South South Triangle cooperation across the world in one single digital space by building bridges and connections, irrespective of distance and development stages of, of, of countries and partners. South South, has, uh, South South Galaxy has the potential to improving the quality of people's lives across the global South. Um, over the past two years, since its launch in September 2019, we were able to operationalize South Galaxy by creating opportunities uh, to, to, to share and learn through various functionalities and tools uh, by making, uh, like I said, Gases of Galaxy a one-stop shop for self uh, cooperation. Um, what we did is that South South Galaxy is connecting and linking um, um, existing uh, South South knowledge sharing platforms developed by UN partners and development, development uh, um, UN partners and also development partners at the same time. That way, you you will be able to go to one place and actually see what our partners are doing in terms of South South cooperation. And also, this is the way that we're not replacing existing mechanisms and platforms. We're just connecting them and linking them into one space. It's also um, uh, facilitating access to available financing mechanisms, capacity development uh, uh, initiatives, and experts and research that are being developed and also uh, 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 presented by our southern partners. It's also serving as a needs broker and, match and matchmaker by connecting solution providers and solution seekers speakers in which connection in many connections and partnerships have actually been established there if a, if a, if a user finds a solution that they that is applicable to them and they would like to implement it in their country um, they can directly connect with the solution uh, provider and there they can have they can collaborate and, and learn from each other um, also we have actually expanded our user base which has currently has over 340 registered organizations which includes over 70 governments. Uh, it has over 62 UN funds, uh, programs, specialized agencies and country offices, and over 200 development partners, which includes NGOs, CSOs, um, uh, research institutions, foundations, IFIs, regional and regional organizations as well. We have also expanded the digital respiratory of good practices. We have over uh, now 650 submitted solutions on South South Triangle cooperation from, from governments, from UN agencies, and also development partners that cover all of the 17 SDGs. We have also systemized um, at the identification of good practice through the development of criteria that is contributing to the harmonization of, of knowledge. This criteria is currently now being used by many of our development partners and also member states. Um, we've also utilized Tesla Galaxy in, 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 in assisting governments and partners in responding to COVID-19 pandemic. We have done a mapping of responses of COVID-19 across the global south and relevant practices in overcoming uh, previous uh, epidemics by providing a, um, a dynamic respiratory uh, of, uh, of practices 
uh, and also to allow countries to quickly uh, access information, compare uh, practice and learn from one another. And also the platform was utilized in organizing and co-organizing over 70 uh, knowledge sharing uh, webinars in partnership with UN partners and also governments, uh, which facilitated the sharing of, of uh, experiences and emerging lessons learned from different countries in responding to COVID-19. That of the platform is also currently being um, utilized as an e-facility for partners to enable cross-border uh, uh, cooperation. It will house the virtual um, secretary for the G7, uh, G7 plus parliamentary assembly, which will bring over 20 parliaments to provide support to each other in matters related to peace, resilience, and development. We're also going to be connecting over 300 cities and institutions from the Global South to engage on the platform, facilitating people to people um, uh, dialogues. We've also introduced uh, the Partner of the Month feature, which features different, a different development partner every month that promotes the exceptional South-South and Triangle Cooperation efforts led by Southern partners while providing a window for development partners to see and recognize opportunities for collaboration that exist. Since the launch, we have featured over 20, 21 partners made up of governments and also development partners and also UN, UN um, agencies. And we're happy to announce that, um, that we will be featuring APC this month. Uh, we will um, uh, also what made the South South Galaxy dynamic and attract a lot of um, engagement is that we we upload new content on daily basis that are related to South South cooperation. And uh, this is really, really important that that way it keeps people coming as a way for them to actually learn what's happening in terms of South cooperation. On a daily basis, we get over 600, 6,000 6, users to, uh, coming to the platform to actually uh, gain um, uh, information insights through the knowledge being shared. And lastly, um, South South Galaxy has been recently embedded into the UN system wide um, strategy on South South cooperation which seeks to uh, galvanize and operationalize South-South and triangular cooperation uh, in a coordinated, coherent manner uh, throughout the UN uh, development system. So as you see, um, through those efforts that have been introduced to South South Galaxy that have improved access uh, by national governments, UN, United Nations country teams, and other national partners uh, to information on knowledge on South South cooperation, especially on me and measures to addressing the pandemic. It has also strengthened the interagency collaboration on South South Triangle cooperation. I don't know if I have time to show a two minute video, uh, but, but maybe I can introduce it after I address maybe the second question. Uh, Grace, you asked how can we strengthen uh, it? Actually, Shans, uh, I think we need to wrap up yours uh, within two minutes. So if you can quickly- <laughs> sure, Let me then address the second question on the ecosystem for our knowledge sharing platforms around the world. Um, I'm going to use actually that the, the, the pandemic as an example for this question. Um, knowledge management has been crucial in responding to COVID-19. Uh, COVID uh, knowledge management has enabled the world to move at a record uh, uh, setting speeds to, uh, to understand the virus, to establish and identify best practices, put in place effective uh, mitigation and response effort and develop treatments and vaccines. Not only have healthcare practitioners, government and the general public uh, shared information knowledge across uh, borders and regions, they have also tapped into a frontline insight to develop, an, uh, uh, to develop new um, approaches and strategies to address the pandemic. Through effective knowledge management, governments, development to practitioners, private sector and other development partners, and other actors have acquired expertise on time sensitive topics and reacted accordingly. Additionally, the uh, COVID-19 pandemic has also altered the work that the, uh, the work styles in many organizations. As you see, so many, so many of us are currently working from home and knowledge management has never been more crucial. Organizations have established processes that enabled employees to collaborate virtually along with also with partners to quickly share information and to connect and, and to innovate from a distance. Um, so, um, K, but KM, you know, needs to be, need to be, uh, be, to be strengthened. We need to understand that the, uh, the KM ecosystem is three-dimensional based on people, processes, and technology. To get the most of the knowledge, uh, uh, knowledge platforms, uh, we, need to we need to have efficient technology. We also need um, humans humans in the loop to guide you toward the best knowledge, information, and, and, and expertise. The easier it is to access and match with the right knowledge, information experts, the more useful the knowledge match platform uh, will be. That's why it's important to implement quick and efficient systems. I hope I wrapped up in two minutes. So um, thank you. And if uh, I'm, I'm happy to address any questions.
Thank you. Over to you. Thank you very much, Shams. Although <clears throat> I would, of course, be of strong interest to show the video, I suggest you to put the link in the chat box because we, do, we, we uh, would like to uh, have time at the end, if possible, to address some of the questions. Thank you, Shams. Um, yes, uh, now we have heard from the experience of South South Galaxy, emphasizing that the power of sharing is connecting. Now, the galaxies to connecting stars, as long as the stars, the separate platforms, um, all the different partners are sharing and being active, the galaxy has a value of providing service and facilitating. Uh, at the end, I am so happy that Shams emphasized the three dimensions of the ecosystem of knowledge management, putting people first. No matter how amazing we have, you know, tools and platforms, it's eventually the people who advance the agenda. Thank you very much. And now let's move on to Mr. Mario Simoli, Deputy Executive Secretary, um, Economic Commission for Latin America and the Caribbean, ACLAC. Mr. Mario is responsible for overseeing and coordinating multidisciplinary and interdivisional work, um, substantive institutional documents, <clears throat> sorry, and advisory services to ACLAC member uh, governments on development issues. So Mr. Mario, what kind of digital development has um, you experienced that really made amazing impact recently in the region? And how can it be harnessed to accelerate the progress in the decade of action towards 2030 agenda? And Mr. Maria, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. It's a really a pleasure to be here. I, my regard to Abdel, Adelatif and our friend Angelo Spina. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. I would take the best to, to Spanish for you. It's not a problem because speaking from the region, I think I am with us the only that can do that at the moment that, that is, can be justified. Así que, muchísimas gracias. So, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. And to be honest, Pero voy a hacer un poquito provocado. ¿Qué this me is a, a provoking question. So concerns me. What concerns here at ACPAC? Well, if we, um, in the system, in the system team, we use the right things, well, it's great. For example, if we use the word resilience correctly, if we use the word immunize, if we use the word um, knowledge management, that's great. If we use business opportunities, partnerships, all of that is perfect. Uh, if I call, if I say 2030, that's perfect. But what concerns is that many of those things make this make our system to separate from the realities of the countries and the reality of the big populations of many countries. And I'm going to explain to you why. It's not so much that it's correct or not correct, but thinking about the development model and incentives and mechanisms. The, and we know that IT is part of that process. And what do we mean that is part of the process? It means that if in Latin America, I have 50% of people uh, with poor connection or no connectivity at all and companies that don't use TI, IT, I can have the best model of the world, the best policies, but the exclusion is going to be even more than in the past. So how can we rethink uh, information technology and the development model? And what did we learn from what had just happened? First, to be clear, the 2030 agenda needs to be an instrument to rethink the relationship of people, not to do it again, because with the numbers we have, it's really difficult. And Sepan shows us in this document that, that we are going to present, that they're going to present, that was launched by Costa Rica about the countries in, in transition and the Obama country is going to show that the 20, we're not going to get to the 2030 goal. It's not going to say it. How do we build political incentives and what changed? Okay, first, the part of the excluded population keeps being excluded. What changed? That the people within families, the exclusion of women, it's still high. So nothing changed. So what changed? The kids, uh, daughters and sons, uh, families in the former poor sector have no access to education. So nothing has changed. So what changed? That SMEs, that uh, have 80% of employees in Latin America incorporate this technology in a superficial, not at the core. 
for production with big data, um, AI, everything that has to do with connections, internet of things, etc. But on the other hand, we have positive things that happen. So what happened in the positive side, for example, a platform such as Mercado Libre, it costs uh, almost like Amazon is a very, very good platform that your platforms start growing in the region and their platforms for public, that we can drive for public policies. That's the reality. That's the reality of a region that we can have, of course, a lot of platforms, but we don't have an absorption of the system. So it's, so this like starts in one point and it becomes stuck in the middle. How can we make this development model to impact the people? Because if we don't do that, we can keep to talking and we're not going to get anything. So what are we proposing for this? These are a clear proposal that Zapata was the basic digital package. For those people that had no access, the basic package, a basic digital package for women too. Second, what public product we create, we propose to get to this goal and what industrial and technological tool can we try to create to incorporate digital technology for the types of processes so that's the point that concerns us the question is and the thing that i'm concerned is how do we couple in that word but digital platforms are not from the south where rent are not from is not from the south where the profits is not from the south where the communication and the market that are regulated are not part of the south how can the south develop themselves because if we can propose millions of platforms amongst ourselves that's great let's do it let's relate to each other but if we don't have those relationships the perception of the people at the base of the population of our exclusion in the South is not going to be part of the process. So this is why, as we have been working, and thank you for the invitation to Angela and the government of Colombia, we send our warmest regards and our warmest greetings. Well, if we don't discuss that subject, we're not going to have the president of the South of Cooperation. That's a fundamental issue. So the question that we ask ourselves is how do we regulate digital platforms when Zoom has, for example, no regulations and they define everything about the North, North, everything is the North. So how can we make this platform to include the informal sector? How can we make these platforms to include the South South? If that's not South South debate, how are they going to perceive us in the North? The people that today have no salaries, no access in their part of the informal sector. That, I think that's the debate. How can we integrate that into people? The, poli the policies to include them in the development model with incentives, with policies, with public public private alliances and partnerships. So thank you very much. Uh, let's use these platforms to be able to provide those responses, but those answers need something real. And today, because if we don't do it now, in 10 years, we're not going to be discussing gaps. Uh, we're going to be talking about gaps, lack of inclusion once again. Thank you, a pleasure. And I hope we have time uh, today at 1 p.m. We have the lunch of request of the government of Costa Rica that all Latin America is going to be present about development transition in digital uh, aspects and the possibility to access the 2030 agenda. It will be great. So warmest greetings from the region and I will see you later. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Mario, for raising very important questions, actually. The, absor uh, the absorption of the system and how can this knowledge sharing, knowledge management platform be really accessible to the global South? And what's the difference if it's South-South, right? And the political support, the basic dif the digital package for all, including women, informal sector, <clears throat> These are very important questions, and you know, we I, I'm sure this would be uh, addressed uh, not only today, but in the work that we'll be doing following up this discussion. Thank you very much, Mr. Mario. And now let's move on to our third uh, speaker from the panel, Mr. Jonathan Yip Wong, Chief uh, of Technology and Innovation Section. Trade Investment and Innovation Division of United Nations Economic and Social Commission for Asia and the Pacific, ASCAP. Actually, Mr. Wang joined ASCAP from the UK Department for International Development, DFID, where he was the inaugural head of innovation. So, Mr. Wang, here, um, I think the question for you is innovation and the digital uh, development. I think innovations are bound, right, in the past years or so, when uh, we all faced these unprecedented challenges, but we all realized the potential 
of digital development. So what are the innovations that you would like to share today and how can these um, be best harnessed to accelerate progress in the decades of action and especially also following up on what Maria, Maria, Mr. Mario was saying that then how can these innovations really benefit the people from the South, the vulnerable communities, groups, uh, women, girls. So yeah, we look forward to hearing from you, your insights. The floor is yours. Thank you so much for inviting me. Um, I mean, on, on your first question around what digital developments have, have, have been used for indeed surprised me. I, I, I think it's no question the speed of digital transformation has probably caught us all by surprise in some shape or form. I, I think chief technology and officers around the world can attest that actually the pandemic has done their job for them in, in many ways. And it's accelerated digital transformation at a pace unprecedented, certainly during, during our, our, our lifetime. Uh, and indeed, you talk about the specific innovations. I mean, digital technologies have allowed governments to implement social protection schemes at scale. Um, they, they've enabled um, e-health and online learning. And in terms of the economy, they, they've helped businesses to continue to operate and trade. And fintech, digital finance, e-commerce have all been technologies that have, have enabled that. And, and of course, businesses that have been um, are digitally enabled and digitally savvy, no, no question, have been more resilient during the pandemic. But, but actually, there's a fact that has surprised me the most. Uh, and it's not a very nice fact, actually, um, <laughs> during this digital development. And it's something Mr. Abdel Latif said earlier on. I mean, it, it's, it's all of us on this webinar today have access to the digital world. You know, we wouldn't be on this, on this Zoom call right now if we didn't. And it's really hard for any of us to imagine what life would be like, particularly during the pandemic, if we didn't have that access. Uh, but as Mr. Abdel Latif said, this is a reality, and particularly where I'm based in the Asia Pacific region, for half the population. So over 2 billion people in the Asia Pacific region just do not have access to the digital world. And, and that's really striking when you think about how, how, how digital has been a necessity for all of us um, during this pandemic. So, 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 it's on, so on to your second question on, on how can this be harnessed? I think we need to harness this point, uh, uh, in fact, to this fact, uh, um, and really keep it front and center of our minds to ensure that the digital transformation happening all around us um, does not become yet another deep faceted source of inequality. Uh, and, and we really need to put inclusivity at the heart of digital transformation if the promise of leave no one behind is to be met. So, I mean, that's a very general broad statement to make. So, so practically, what does it mean? I think we need to answer some very big questions. And, and, and it points to what Mario was saying about, about um, inclusivity in the vulnerable communities. For me, the key, the key questions are, how can we ensure internet access for all, both in rural and urban environments? How can we make technology accessible and affordable to the very, very poorest people? How can we engage more women in the digital economy? I mean, th these, these are the chunky specific questions um, we need to really channel our efforts towards together to, 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 to actually make sure that um, we leave no one behind during the digital revolution. Now, again, very easy for me to answer, to, set, to, to give those questions, but what practically would that look like? I mean, to give some examples of SCAP's work, and um, we worked with the government of Mongolia on their first ever digital strategy, which specifically had inclusive dimensions within that strategy. So how could they reach the rural communities and specific plans on how they would do that. We, we, I, I spoke about the importance of ensuring technology is accessible and affordable for all. Again, we worked with the 10 ASEAN member states on, on, on the world's first set of inclusive business guidelines. So, so what, what are these inclusive business guidelines? They are specific incentives that the government's put in place through policy to incentivize businesses, including technology companies, including internet providers, to provide products and services to the very, very poorest people. Um, in terms of um, engaging women and girls, again, we're working with governments in Nepal, Bangladesh, Vietnam, Cambodia, Samoa, and Fiji to en ingrain gender lens um, um, approaches within their digital financing strategy so that more women can actually engage in the digital economy. 
I mean, these are the very, very practical policy examples um, that, that we've been working on in the region. And we'd be more than happy to engage on a platform to share these, um, to, to, to maybe see if they can be replicated in other parts of the world who are facing similar problems or, or indeed can be, can be tailored to fit context as well. Um, I, I'll, I'm mindful of the time, so, so I'll just end with really saying it, it, it's very obvious, I'm sure to all of us, that, that, that the digital transformation happening all around us is, is an absolute certainty. But I think what, not, what is, is not certain is its direction. And indeed, we must really work together to ensure that this digital transformation actually has a positive impact on society and environment and not just profits on the bottom line. And again, we need to put inclusivity at the heart of all of this. So as Mario said, we, the, the vulnerable aren't left behind. We engage more women and girls and the very poorest can benefit as well, because only then do we stand the chance of realizing the potential of digital transformation uh, to accelerate progress on the SDGs. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Jonathan. Um, I think this conversation has become more and more inspiring that we are showing all the initiatives we're doing, but at the same time, we ask the question deep in our heart, then how can all this practices innovations platform to really address the issue of inequality? So building on the previous speakers, it seems to me that there is already a calling for guidelines on inclusiveness, but also for practical toolkits that all the different platforms and systems can you know, make use of. This is a real question that during the past two years, two plus years, starting from the conceptualization of Galaxy, we were thinking about that. And then we decided as a choice that the design of the platform was very simple and a lot of words and less you know, videos and, and to enable better access. However, it's a trade-off. After two years, many of the enthusiastic partners are asking us, oh, can you set up an exhibition hall? Can you do the virtual reality? Can you? So there is a demand for really modern and you know, uh, uh, technologies. There is also a demand for easy access. How do we balance that? What are the practical tools that we offer? So thank you very much for bringing the conversation to this point. And I already have an idea I maybe propose at the end <laughs> to say that we should work together to resolve this. Yeah, thank you. Now let's move on to hear from uh, Ms. Sara Hamoda, SDGs and Agenda 2060 expert from Africa Peer Review Mechanism. She's in charge of the Agenda 2063 SDGs unit and South-South cooperation, managed the continental capacity development projects, as well as uh, Agenda 2060's advocacy, implementation, monitoring, and evaluation. So a lot of uh, rich experience and perspectives from Africa continent. Uh, Ms. Sarah, so what digital uh, development experiences you would like to share? Um, from Africa and based on the needs, the innovations from the continent? And how can we do better to harness this power for the achievement of the 2063 um, agenda and the 2030 agenda? Ms. Sarah, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you so much. Can you hear me? Uh, we can hear, but a little bit remote. Can you speak louder and closer to the microphone? Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, it's much this better. Is better. Perfect. So good afternoon, colleagues from Johannesburg, distinguished panelists. All protocols are observed for the sake of time. Ms. Angla, thank you very much for, um, I mean, um, um, your kind invitation to EPRM to join this panel. Uh, allow me first to convey Professor Maloka's sincere appreciation uh, to yourself and your team. Uh, we were hoping to receive you at the headquarters of EPRM when you visited uh, Johannesburg a few weeks ago. Uh, but I know that you have also a very tight schedule. Uh, unfortunately, Professor Maluka also couldn't be with us today, given his business trip to West Africa, since we are launching our governance assessment report in Nigeria. Um, of course, there is no need to emphasize, as uh, most of my colleagues and panelists uh, confess the role of digitalization for knowledge sharing, as well as generating new initiatives. Indeed, digital solutions and e-government is one of the key governance enablers to not only contain the pandemic, but also accelerate domestication, implementation of different SDGs, 
and of course Agenda 2063 um, uh, projects. Well, uh, when it comes to Africa, there is there are mainly two main issues I always uh, emphasize in my talk. First, that the specificities of each country and different national complexities and priorities they have to some extent derailed sometimes galvanizing uh, digitalization in the continent. The expenditure on e-government in, in Africa, um, e-government innovation and digitalization remains very minimal compared to other continents. We take note, for instance, that Mauritius was ranked highest among African countries based on the e-government index, followed by Seychelles, South Africa, Tunisia and Senegal. So not necessarily the forerunners for SDGs are also uh, spending enough on digitalization, which is quite a difficult comparison. Second, uh, I, has, I, I also shall emphasize that investing and leveraging technology uh, transformation and remote agility becomes imperative, especially with the impact of the pandemic on public service delivery uh, and citizens trust in the government as well. The shift from the traditional modi operandi uh, of the public sector to remote work um, also affected the, the organizational efficiency, program planning and delivery alongside communication and employees motivation. So far, we know that the ability of African institutions to respond in a, in a, in a resilient manner and the acceleration of e-government model vary widely from a country to another and highly dependent to the political will uh, of the leadership, financial and human resources, IT infrastructure, actually the investment in, inf in infrastructure in the last decade, digital literacy of citizens and, and finally stakeholder in engagement, particularly with the private sector and civil society. Uh, as regard initiatives, I would say that not surprised me, but somehow impressed me to some extent. We, all, we have regional uh, initiatives and national initiatives. The regional initiatives have been led by um, the African Union and mainly also the common Africa continental strategy on COVID-19. This strategy has been playing a crucial role as a strategic framework. I think I mentioned it last year also and in the DG Forum of South-South Cooperation. The strategy framework adopted by the African Union Commission to prevent severe illness, to minimize social disruption and economic consequences of COVID-19. It also ensures synergies to avoid duplication through um, uh, continental coordination with the United Nations and WHO and regional blocs and to promote evidence-based public health practices for surveillance, prevention, and control of the pandemic. One of the also good efforts played by the CDC um, is the, um, the provide centralized technical support to member states for testing capacities, to provide also um, uh, infection prevention and control in healthcare facilities, and clinical management and safety protocol to be circulated amongst African states. At the EU level, also we are as EPRM, uh, as a pure learning governance review for more than 15 years, we have been dedicated to promote the good governance uh, practices amongst our member states, who are which are voluntarily acceding to the EPRM. But also now we are concerned about sharing best practices and good governance by developing uh, our uh, knowledge hub, what we call it governance knowledge hub. I think I mentioned that to Catalina when she paid us uh, her kind visit um, at the EPRM. Uh, this, AP, this EPRM knowledge governance hub is supported by the African Development Bank and we aim through this hub to uh, serve as a gateway for knowledge, learning, statistical data, training modules on monitoring and evaluation and practical experience on good governance in Africa. I'm happy to say that we already started uh, actual steps uh, in collaboration with the GIZ to develop the first ever maybe training on South-South cooperation and its impact on the uh, achievement of SDGs and Agenda 2063. And very happy to say that APC Colombia has been chosen as one of uh, the main influential, I would say, uh, partners in the Global South. And we, are, we will reach uh, out soon with our colleagues to invite a speaker from APC Colombia to share also some insights from Colombia to the African experts. This is more, probably, I would say, one of the very few courses we have been trying to uh, develop in order to enhance the understanding and awareness of African experts about South-South cooperation and SDGs, because this has been also a demand by many of them. At national levels, you know, there are lots of things have been done. Various initiatives are adopted for sharing information uh, and the uh, geolocation of cases, like there was collaborative tools at the government level. Uh, in South Africa, we have been fully uh, working remotely for almost now one, one year. Uh, platforms have been utilized to allow countries to keep operating public services, such as ministerial councils, crisis units, and also surveillance teams. Um, we can see this also in Ghana, Egypt, 
Uh, almost 80% of discussions now are run uh, through digital platforms. We have also contact tracing uh, applications. Maybe you have noticed that many countries now are developing this uh, contact tracing app in order to uh, track and monitor the pandemic um, and also to alert citizens uh, as regard the areas where pandemic are proliferated to take precautions. We, we widely use it here in South Africa. Senegal and Morocco are also good examples. We have large communication tools like dashboards um, truly developed by and supported by the WHO in order to raise citizens' awareness on the pandemic and also avoid misinformation. I think uh, there's a good example here from Egypt. And um, there are other initiatives I would say were found for self-assessment solution to identify the pandemic, including using uh, robots uh, like the case of Rwanda in Ghana, uh, also the unstructured supplementary service data technology. It's a kind of technology developed by Sierra Leone to conduct a self-assessment of their symptoms and also get updates on the COVID-19 situation. So I would say Africa today I, in, is in a, I would say in a much better position compared to 2013, 2014, even during the Ebola crisis. And this was one of the lessons learned from Ebola that uh, countries shall also transform uh, step by step to uh, develop healthcare software. And as I said, the USSD, the unstructured supplementary service data. Uh, the educational platforms, which have been also developed to, to avoid the disruption of education in some countries. And lastly, but not least, of course, the e-commerce uh, uh, purchase and delivery platforms. This has been tremendously helpful in the continent. Uh, so in a nutshell, there were different kinds of, of, innov of innovative tools, but there is no uh, doubt that what um, Ambassador Adel highlighted regarding the lack of access to IT and lack of access to uh, IT infrastructure in Africa is a challenge. There is another challenge which uh, uh, remains uh, as regard national statistical capacities and national statistical offices capacities to track SDG3. Unfortunately, until 2020, I would say the SDG3 couldn't be tracked appropriately. We are more focusing on SDG16 on institutions, but of course, uh, health um, and also SDG16 is cross-cutting issue um, uh, concerned about institutions uh, in different sectors. So what we have done as EPRM that we, we are now encouraging member states to uh, report on resilience as a thematic area uh, as part of the governance assessment, because we also take a note of the fact that even though African countries are developing disaster frameworks, they are not operationalizing it uh, appropriately at national level. And we also take note of the, uh, the fact that Africa is the lowest performer worldwide in improving healthcare uh, sector and there is a strong reliance on medical supplies from uh, outside the continent. So we also hope through our work on South-South cooperation to raise the knowledge on the value of regional integration and the Africa continental free trade area and what these kind of initiatives can can do for, um, uh, for um, I mean, containing such disasters in the future. Lastly, but not least, we have um, very good uh, relation with the UNDESA and uh, other regional organs where we hope to enhance public civil servants' adaptive capacity, capacities pardon, and leadership skills and SDGs awareness. Uh, we are committed to this under the UNAU framework for the implementation of both agendas, 2030 and 2063. And uh, we have recently conducted a study on SIPA, uh, uh, SIPA principles for effective governance of SDGs. It covers a wide area of, uh, I would say, principles like effectiveness, efficiency. It includes actually e-government e as one of the strategic policies to enhance sound policy making. And um, the, the feedback we got from the 13 African countries is that we need to enhance uh, collaboration and the skills of civil servants and their understanding even of uh, current uh, issues. Let me stop here. I know that I, I, I passed even my five minutes. I thank you. And I look forward to institutionalizing and collaborating also with the APC Columbia and, of course, our, um, our partners in New York, the UN Office for South-South Cooperation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ms. Sarah. Yeah, for, you know, emphasizing this ecosystem for digitalization from infrastructure to capacity and skills, especially sharing the regional innovations and initiatives and national initiatives from both uh, middle income and LDCs. So everybody has 
good initiatives to share and to collaborate. We really hope this kind of initiatives will be supported by all the relevant channels and platforms for more regions and countries and people to benefit. Thank you very much, Sarah, and look forward to collaboration even closer with you. Now let's move on to our last but the most important speaker, Ms. Rachel Sanzi, Knowledge Broker, Communications and Business Intelligence Specialist from Knowledge Management for Development. And I know you have over 25 years of uh, experiences in this field of knowledge management and supported APC, um, work with APC to design this knowledge hub. So uh, it's very important to hear from you, then what innovative elements for digital collaboration do you identify in the process? Um, and how can that uh, be leveraged to address the key points and questions the previous speaker was emphasizing in the process of achieving uh, our sustainable development goals? So Ms. Uh, Rochil, the floor is yours. Thank you. <clears throat> I the logo of KM for Death beh be behind, because I'm bringing also the experience of KM for Death. KM for Death is a community of practice for development. And uh, many of the principles that we apply there is the principles we use to apply and develop the KM hub, the, the, the hub for, for Colombia. Thank you, Angela, for the invitation. Thank you, Catalina, Luis, Daniel, Miriam and all the team because it's been really great uh, it's really a great experience it's been really uh, well i'm very happy to know that it's already up and running and that i really really wish you all the best in the in the development uh, talking to came for dev uh, i just want to go a little bit uh, back to understand what is came for dev uh, and then these are the principles that the base of the development that we used to develop the, the hub for APC. The KM Hub for Dev, as I said, is a community of practice focused on knowledge sharing in the context of development. It's a community that seeks to strengthen collaboration to peer for peer support, for learning, and for a strengthened community, and no matter where we are. Um, just to give you a little bit of background, KM for Dev was uh, created in 2000, and, hand by the hand of the World Bank. And it was initially created as a, as a closed group, uh, basically experts of the UN, um, some agencies working on development and the, where they could actually share uh, their knowledge and, and grow to, and learn together. The principles that guided the initial uh, were apply and continue apply until now. But in 2010, it was a change because basically uh, the management was handed to was handed over to volunteers from all over the world, and we started to increase the community. So as we were increasing the community, we not only had members of the UM as practitioners, but we also started to have members of different NGOs, governments, academia, independent consultants, students, and anyone interested in the man in the management of knowledge and learning. So our work was initially um, used on well, message exchanges and occasionally presential meetings. Last year, as you can imagine, we were about to celebrate the 20th anniversary of KM for Death and COVID happened. So all the presential events that we were planning, we couldn't do. And this is when we started to think, what about we use our virtual space to create knowledge cafes. So we started to invite people to, to do knowledge cafes as a way of celebrating the anniversary. We did from May to June, a weekly basis of knowledge cafes. And basically participation grew from initially 27 participants out of 53 registers to 100 uh, participants out of 200 register. We realized that we did an, an event throughout uh, a week uh, with different time tables so we could have different participations from all over the world, different languages, English, French, and Spanish. And we realized it, it was working. People were enthusiastic and they were asking. We were receiving a lot of feedback to 
to do more, to do more. They want to learn, they wanted to learn, they wanted to participate, they wanted to give us their, their feedback. So we initiated as of September, a series of monthly sessions. These monthly sessions uh, were based on peer-to-peer -peer support, responding to questions, what is the need of the user? It's a win-win space. So this has been only increasing, and I really wish that the half of Colombia ha continue having the same impact that we had, because when we are able to create an, an event, uh, uh, create a space that respond to the needs of the users, when we are able to collaborate and grow together, I mean, experience have shown this is a place created by volunteers nowadays, and we have we changed our platform in December 2020, and we have continued with our uh, monthly events. From 700 people we had in December, we now have 932, and it continues grows. Not only now on the events, on the knowledge cafes, but also on the exchanges, because people feel, well, it's no longer a place where experts talk, but I can actually flag a need. I can actually say what I need. I can act, would ask for support. So we have an increase, amazing, the, of participation, of exchanges, and then network that grows and, and can continue outside our community. Uh, one thing I would say, uh, just to, to close, I think, main things happen when you are able to listen, when you are able to create a space for feedback, when you are able, out of each one of our events, we have always sit down and reflect and think what we could have done better to improve for the next one. And we ask the community, we open the space to everybody. Anything you have to give us uh, that you want to present, show to us so anything that can inspire can create collaborations can build bridges it's it's important and this time and the knowledge cafes i would say one of the things that brought us um, together and i would say the learnings that came with that is not only we were aiming to strength community but all, not only we we did that we responded to interest and out of that, we increased ownership. And with this ownership, increased participation and the contributions increased both presential and on writing in messages. There were more participation. If we have done this 20th anniversary presential, most people would have not been able to participate. So we increased representation, we increased engagement, it was more inclusive. And we continue learning. We keep a humble approach, say, uh, conscious that we don't know everything and we are here to serve the community. And I really hope that what we created on the hub with uh, APC will follow with the same principles to support the South South cooperation. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you very much, Josil, for you know introducing your. Um, reflections on the whole uh, innovative elements of this knowledge hub, but also remind us that it's very important to keep the mind open, keep a space for feedback. That's the only way to keep perfecting our initiatives. So, you know, I don't attempt to summarize everything uh, from this panel. It's just, uh, you know, I think we have learned from the panel that this is no longer just an important issue to combine digital technology with knowledge. It's a necessity. And while innovations abound, there are a lot of challenges of ensuring inclusivity, addressing inequality, we need to do more. I think I would like to now pass on you know, the floor to Dr. Uh, Angela, Director General of APC to do the closing remarks for this wonderful session. Dr. Angela, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Grace. And uh, I'm going to, uh, to uh, address uh, in Spanish as Mario Simoli uh, did Mario Simoli. It's easier for me. Uh, 
Fue un placer haber It was a pleasure to have shared with all of you. To share a lot of moments. Warning moments like, like Mr. Abdelatif did. He warned us about the risks, of course. Risks that we all know about. Risks that we live through today, being Colombia, uh, middle, uh, low income, middle, high income country. It, we just uh, just became part of OACD. So we know that these moments can be, can make us go backwards. It's really dangerous. All the warnings. De las brechas de género. All the warnings that we have in the digital and gender gaps are real. We acknowledge them and we will keep working to make that better. Also, Mario Simoli has also asked his uh, provoking questions, but we, with the provoking questions, we have to go beyond more strength. So why do we ask the questions if there's no answers? And that's precisely the exercise that we are looking for. And this way, I will integrate Sam, Sara, Rocio, and Jonathan. Guys, these are answers. These guys give us answers. Of course, there are gaps. Of course, there are traps, but we will need to move forward and precisely to strengthen cooperation, to strengthen the work among peers, to increase the relationship between us. And what we saw at that mo this moment was wonderful. Sara, South Africa. I don't even know what time it's over there uh, with Jonathan. He is going to lead us precisely to Asia. Rocio from Spain, Mr. Abdelatif, Shams, Grace in New York. So we in Bogota, more than 100 people that is connected here with us in, a, in from all over the world. The digital world and this um, impulse that we saw each other subjected today also has some barriers. Of course it does but we will need to bring them forward. We cannot stop a reality that happened. Mario was telling us, one thing is the discourse, one thing is the speech, and another thing is the real world. Of course, we know about that, especially everyone that spent the most time in the real world than in the digital world. But once again, by launching uh, a hub with deep humility, with huge acknowledgement to the work that you did, Rocio, with our team. It's a way to show and invite other countries of the global south for this knowledge that we are transferring in a tradition that we conveyed in a more traditional way for more than 40 years. It's time to turn it around, make it digital, not only in terms of in saying digital, digital, no. It's something that really caught my attention with Jonathan and with Shams too. This, it, we need to join opinions of what what is the best practice. There is not unification of criteria. And if we in the South, South region of the world, we transfer knowledge, we transfer best practices, that will be an amazing exercise that it is, what, what's the best practice? And when that knowledge transfer response to um, maybe not a global model, but a model that guarantees its succession. So one or, or its completion. And I hope we can see you soon. Of course, you too also, Mr. Abdelatif in New York. I miss the planes. Me encanta viajar. Thank you very much. And I love to travel. So yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Angela. I would like to especially thank all our panel members for their amazing contributions and to all the attendees that joined this space. We would like to thank the people from the Embassy of Honduras in Colombia, Embassy in Chile in Colombia that were here with us as attendees in this side event. Uh, for those of us who want to watch this space again or that maybe joined late, can access the video that is going to be uploaded in the webpage of APC Colombia. Once again, I'm going to invite every panelist and attendee so that I'll turn on your camera, give me a big smile for an official photo of this event. So in five seconds, we're gonna take the picture. So if you wanna turn on your camera, please do it. Fix yourself up, put on a big smile and say cheese. All right. All right. 
Thank you very much. Picture taken. So I would like to thank you. We're going to send you this picture so that you can have a souvenir of this band and you can tweet it in your accounts. Thank you very much to everyone. Thank you. We will see you next time. Thank you all. Thank you, Angela. Thank bye -bye. you. Bye bye. Bye. Bye, bye. bye Angela. You have a wonderful team. It's such oh, a pleasure thank to you. work together. Thank you. <laughs> thank, thank you. you. Bye. Thank you, colleagues. Gracias a todos.